When planning your images, looking at paper charts can be an excellent method to see when and where the object will be located in the night sky. However, what if you could see a virtual representation of that object with all other objects around it in the night sky and the ground you'll be standing on? In this video, we'll go over a general overview of the powerful planetarium software, Stellarium. Hi there, my name is Dalen. Here at Astro Escape, we go over all things astrophotography, starting from the very beginner level and working our way up from there. If you're new here and you enjoy what you see as you're watching the video, please consider subscribing. Let's get into it. Stellarium is a free planetarium software that allows you to see the sky as it is from where and when you are or where and when you are planning to take your images. It is available on Windows, Mac, Linux. There is a browser version and a mobile version. The current version I am showing in this video is 0.20.4. Be aware that developers may change icons in newer versions, but the layout stays pretty much the same. So when you first open it, you'll see a default view, very much like what you're seeing on screen, and it'll be open to the time of day on your computer. At the bottom left, if you click these two arrows, this will lock the uh, control bars up. So the next thing you're going to want to do is change your location. You can change your location by choosing from the list in the location window and you can do a few different things to find your location. You can either search for it. So I live in Pittsburgh so I could type in Pittsburgh or I could scroll up and down the list to try to find it which honestly takes forever so I wouldn't recommend doing that. Or if you're located somewhere that's not already on the list you can go to latlong.net and click on the map that's kind of like a Google map to get your coordinates. Use the GPS coordinates that show up under the Google map. That way you can just copy and paste it right in. Now when you go to add your location all you have to do is just type in the name of the location that you want to save it as and then just click add to list. The next thing you're going to want to do is set your light pollution level. You'll want to set this so it's more accurate to what you are seeing when you're out there. This can be helpful if you don't have a go-to mount and you have to manually find your target. So to set this we will go into the sky and viewing options window or you can hit F4 to bring that up on PC and from there you can just change your light pollution level based on where you're at. So at the observatory that I have this located at, it is around a Wordle 5. However, don't ever check the take from locations database. It actually doesn't work out that well, at least in my opinion. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure you have the catalog open that you'll wanna use. So there are three very common catalogs that you'll see on most publications. And um, if you're in the astronomy league and want to find objects, these three catalogs are most typical of uh, what they offer. So to find them, you go into the DSO tab. You just want to make sure that M for Messier, IC for index catalog, and NGC for new general catalog are the three that are checked. Like I said, they are the most popular. So if you have these three checked, you're going to have quite a few hundred objects to work with and you don't really need to worry about too much else. So the last thing we will go over is changing your ground. So to do that, you go into the landscape tab and you can go through and cycle through any of these uh, extra landscapes. You can even uh, show that you're on Mars, which is kind of cool. Uh, you can see the ground here. And if we switch real quick back to daylight, we can see what it looks like on Mars from the rover. But moving it back, you can just set whatever you want or you can set your own. I have mine set to Wagman Observatory here in Pittsburgh. However, in another video, we will go over how to manually add your own using a panorama that you've shot. All right, so let's go over some things you can do. And the first thing is obviously you can change the date and time. You already saw me change the time a little bit to set it back to the day. And if you're ever wanting to go back to real time, you just click this little button down here by the play button. You can also change the month. So you can set it ahead to say you wanna do some Milky Way shots in June. And usually that's around the middle of the month. So you can set it to, you know, say June 15th. And then you can set it to any time of night to see exactly where the Milky Way will be. But let's go back to real time. So let's say we're looking at Orion or imaging it. So first we can bring up deep sky objects with this button just to list what's there. After clicking on it, we can either choose to do visual or imaging. So let's go with imaging and we'll click on the sensors button right here. 
Now this brings up a list uh, that's three different parts that shows your sensor, the telescope, and if you're using a Barlow. The first thing I will say is never use a Barlow. And the reason I mentioned that, we'll go over in another video. Let's just stick to the basics here. Okay, so you can cycle through the different sensors you're using, uh, that's your cameras. And let's just settle on uh, a classic SLR. And you can cycle through your telescopes just to get a general idea of what it will look like. So we'll just put it on the 80 millimeter mead here real quick. You can do the same thing with visual observing with this button here, and this is what it will look like through a telescope. And just keep in mind that this is this has a basic list of equipment already built into it. We will go over in another video how to add your own equipment. All right, backing out of here, it can do a few cool other things. Like you can see the constellation lines. You can see the constellation names. You can see the constellation artwork, just in case you wanted to check that out. So you can turn on and off meteor showers and you can also see uh, hints for satellites. And just for fun, you can go a little over 100,000 years into the past and a little under 100,000 years into the future. It's pretty neat to see how the constellations change over time if you have the lines turned on. Oh, do me a favor. I want you to go in and go all the way in the past as far as you can go and check out what time sunrise was. At least here in the East Coast, it's at a pretty interesting time. And then let me know what you think down in the comments. So there's much more with this program you can do. If you check out the playlist popping up on your screen right now, we go over settings you can set, the other things I mentioned like adding your own gear and ground and much more. If you found this video helpful, please do like, give me that comment about the sunrise, and then subscribe and then hit that little notification bell so that way YouTube does tell you when I upload the next video. I wanna thank you for watching. Clear skies.